Hi everyone, this is Christelle from Kitty Studio. This is a guide on how to make the patchwork jacket. It's not as much a tutorial as it is insight on how I made the jacket, so I hope it helps and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I'll go over materials and options, Tunisian crochet with just one color so it's easier for you to see, how to prepare for joining the patches, the design structure of the jacket with my medium jacket as an example, and finally how to join the patches given the variety of shapes. For materials, you're going to want a J-hook or 6mm hook, a darning needle, scissors, and about 7 different color yarns. I used about 200 yards of each to make a medium sized jacket, and for the teal that you see that's like really prominent in my jacket, um, it's about 100 yards more, so um, if you want a color to really stand out or to be like the main color, you're definitely going to have to be intentional with that. I also have only 5 colors here, but I wanted to show you the varying weights that you could use. I highly encourage you to do that, um, mostly because it's going to be easier for you to <laughs> source your yarn. Um, but also I think it adds nice texture to the piece, and I'll be showing you later how I account for that. Some optional materials are a larger hook to work looser stitches, and I'll show you how I use that later. And blocking materials, um, it's kind of optional in material, but I don't recommend skipping the blocking. Um, so I personally used a blocking mat, pins, and a clothing iron as a steamer. But it made such a difference and it took a long time, but it was totally worth like the nice neat look it gave each patch. I also don't own a Tunisian crochet hook, so if you have one, this is going to be so much easier. You're going to have so much more leeway than I did. Um, but if you don't have one, use a plain crochet hook like my J hook. Um, not one with the grip like the yellow one that you see there. Because your loops are going to have to sit on your hook, and so you need that extra space. And I think that a grip is going to impede on allowing those little loops to sit there. And yeah. To practice Tunisian crochet, we're going to chain five with our larger hook. So notice that I have less yarn, so I'm using smaller hooks, and that's okay. I'm also using the optional larger hook, which you don't have to use. So once I've done my chain five, I'm going to switch hooks and chain one. In the second chain from my hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull through, and then continue that all the way through on my starting chain. So yarn over, pull through. Um, each chain. Once I'm done I should have six loops sitting on my hook and on the final loop I'm going to yarn over and pull through and I still have six loops sitting on my hook so what I'm going to do is yarn over and pull through two loops to create my very first stitch, yarn over and pull through two loops to create the second stitch and so on. So the third stitch, fourth stitch, and fifth stitch. For the second row, we're going to be working into the little line that you see developing. So you're going to put your hook through, then yarn over and pull through that little stitch. And just the way you did with the chain from the very first row. What you want to make sure of when you end this row and the following rows is to work into the last two loops of your row. Um, because if you don't, it's going to come out really bumpy. So make sure you do that. And it should be like a V-shape. And you also are going to see a V-shape developing in the very front side of your patch. So just like normal, yarn over, pull through, uh, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then you'll have your stitches for the row. To finish up this piece, we're going to switch hooks. So again, this is totally optional, but easier for me. So what we're going to do is work into that stitch, just like normal, but we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, so kind of like a slip stitch. And just like normal, for the final stitch, we're going to make sure that we work into those two loops, into that little V shape. Um, but instead, we're going to yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and that's it. So working with two colors should be about the same. The only thing that you might see different in this video is that I'm giving a little bit more leeway and giving an extra tug to these loops. And that's because when I come back down or when I do those pulling through those two loops um, in the second round, I guess, of this row, um, I found that the tension is like kind of awkward if it's too tight. So just make sure that you give yourself a little leeway. Once I'm done with the patch, I tried to make the leftover yarn three times as long as the longest side of my patch. So as you can see, the height is the longest, so I try to make it three times as wide as that and then cut off the yarn there. 
So this is the basic construction of the jacket and you might be thinking like how am I supposed to plan out the patches to match these shapes and my answer to that is um, I didn't either. I just kind of like winged it first and then planned. So what I mean by that is I made a bunch of patches, whatever I wanted to make, it didn't matter the size or the color. I just made a bunch of them and then I started to try to build the shapes that I see. So once I arranged the patches in a way that like made sense to me in terms of shape and color, I was able to see like a clear gap or a couple gaps in where I would fill in and be more intentional with my time. Um, the number that you see there are like row counts just to kind of see if I could make the shape like a certain height, which kind of helped and kind of didn't because as we know, like the weights were varying. So like for example, the purpley patch that I have here is five rows tall and the pinkish patch is four rows tall and they're pretty much the same height. So it kind of didn't really matter what the row number was. I was kind of okay with just being like ballpark numbers. So if it was 50 that I wanted to be at, 49 was okay. Something to point out moving forward is that when I counted rows like up and down, I would count the space in between the patches uh, as a row because I knew that gravity would be kind of tugging at it and there would be like a little bit of a gap there versus side to side. There wasn't as much of a gap. It wasn't pulling as much. So I didn't really count it as a separate stitch. Also keep in mind with Tunisian crochet that the little lines are kind of tempting to count, but they're not real. So um, this patch has 11 little lines, but it actually has 10 stitches in the row. The back panel is pretty straightforward except for the shoulder space. Um, so as you can see, the arm space kind of ends, and that should be like the very top of your shoulder. Um, the shoulder space is to sit over your shoulder, so that way the jacket's super comfortable. So for example, my jacket had six rows between the back panel and the front panel, and those 10 stitches are going to attach to the front panels later on. For the front panels, you want to repeat what you did for the back panel in terms of height, but for the width, you want to be a little bit more than half of what you had in terms of uh, the number of stitches. So for example, uh, the width of my back panel uh, was 45 stitches at the bottom, so the width of my front panel is going to be about 25 stitches at the bottom. I also want to emphasize that you have to make the front panels mirrored because if you make them completely identical, one side is going to be wrong side up. So it's not like regular crochet. This will definitely be clear that this is the wrong side facing out. For the width of the arms, I recommend using the width of the front panel because this is going to be the overall width, meaning that it has to wrap around your arm. So you can mess with that as much as you'd like. And for the collar, it's going to be the easiest part because it's just going to be the same height all around. For the armpits, given that they're going to add five extra stitches, that means the total arm that's going to attach to your arm space on your panels is going to be about 30 stitches, which is really great because um, if you recall, like my arm space is about 16 stitches in the front and back, so having 15 stitches in the arms is going to be a nice match. Something that really helped with this project was the fact that I made all of my patches in multiples of five in terms of width. So for example, the larger patch you see there is 10 stitches wide and the smaller one is five stitches wide and the largest I had was 15 stitches wide. So they were very easy to kind of put together and match up well. And the one thing I did notice when I was trying to sew them together with a darning needle was that once I sewed through or I guess went under the stitch for one patch, I had to go back to the patch that had the, um, I guess, the leftover yarn that I was using, or else it would look kind of empty there. So once I did that, all I did was just go back around and try to make uh, the loops as consistent as possible.
When there's a mismatch in row count, just try your best to line them up and double dip on some of the stitches. After attaching all your pieces, all you have to do is single crochet, add a little trim around your jacket, and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this was my first tutorial ever, so I usually mute tutorials. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but um, yes, please like, subscribe, comment, and also I have more patterns um, that you can purchase on the website at www.kitystudio.com and find me on Instagram as well. Thanks!